Hello everyone. In this episode, we're going to talk about ray traced shadows. Before turning on ray tracing, I'd like to show you the traditional method for creating shadows in Unreal and explain a couple of weaknesses that it has. Then we'll turn on ray traced shadows and I'll show you how these weaknesses are solved by ray tracing. Finally, we'll go over the settings available for ray trace shadows, and I'll explain what they do. So let's get started. So here we are in Unreal, and I've set up a couple of test objects. I have a cube, a sphere, a cone, and a cylinder. And we're just gonna use these to cast some shadows for us so we can take a look at what the shadows are doing. The first problem that I wanna point out is right here, down here next to the cube. And so we're using just the traditional method of shadow mapping in Unreal, where we render the scene from the point of view of the light, and then we compare that with the point of view of the camera, and any pixels that aren't visible from the point of view of the light, uh, we assume are in shadow. Now one of the things uh, that's wrong with this method is called the Peter Pan effect. And you can see that right here next to this uh, cube. What's happening here is we have something on our spotlight called shadow bias. Let me just select our spotlight in our scene here. And I'll come down here and find our shadow bias setting. And there's a nice description here of what it does, but basically it's there to remove an artifact that's even worse than this Peter Panning effect. What's happening here is the shadow is kind of pulling itself away from the base of the object that's casting it. And let me show you the other artifact that happens if we don't have shadow bias. So I'm just going to set shadow bias to zero. And you can see that there are all these like really ugly streaking and smearing effects. I can get rid of those and the higher I make the shadow bias value, the fewer of those streaking and smearing shadow effects that we'll get. But the higher I set that value, the more Peter Panning we get. So it's kind of like bad if you do, bad if you don't. So you kind of want to tune this shadow bias uh, to as low as you can go. Um, but it, the lower you go, you also start getting uh, these other streaking and smearing effects in your shadow. So let's just set shadow bias back to 0 0.5. And I'll show you the other issue. To do this, I'm going to switch over to a screenshot that I found uh, that shows this off really well. This isn't necessarily a weakness in Unreal, but rather a missing feature. Um, I don't know if you can see this very well, but the shadows next to the feet here are really sharp. And then the farther away from the shadow we get, the more blurry the reflection is. And this is happening because the sun is not a perfectly, infinitely small point. It's actually a volume. So the further away from the shadow caster we get, the blurrier our reflection or our shadows are going to be because some points on that edge can see part of the sun, but not the whole sun. So right along the edge of the shadow, uh, we get blurry shadows the further away from the shadow caster we are. Now, if I switch back to Unreal here, uh, and I go as far away from the shadow caster as I can, you can see that the edge of these shadows is just the same as the edge right next to the shadow caster. So we're not actually simulating this effect of the shadows getting blurrier the further away from the shadow caster we are. All right, so we talked about Peter Panning and we talked about uh, soft shadows. Now, if I come over here to the light source, there actually is a source radius where I can increase the size of the light source. So let's just come over here and select my spotlight again. You can see that right now our source radius is set to zero, so my spotlight is basically infinitely small. As I increase this, you should see the shadow get blurrier, uh, but it doesn't. So I'm just gonna like set my radius to this and this is basically representing the size of the light source in the world so i've got a really large spotlight now and in reality my shadows the further away from the shadow caster i get my shadows should be nice and soft 
um, but they're not. And this is a weakness of the standard method used to cast shadows in Unreal. Now, let's come down here to our settings and there's this checkbox here called Cast Ray Tracing Shadows. And if I turn it on, whoa, now look. All right, so we're using ray tracing now to cast shadows. If you see, if you look at my frame right here, it's about 53 FPS. And if I turn off ray trace shadows, uh, it jumps up to 62, which is basically the, the limit of the frame rate that I've given it. So you can see that there is a little bit of extra cost uh, for having a ray traced shadow on this light. But the other thing that you'll notice is that that Peter Panning effect that was happening is now gone. The shadow is full right up to the edge of the object and it's also really soft out here far away from the object. So I've taken care of both of those weaknesses uh, that I talked about that are there with traditional ca shadow casting methods. There's no Peter Panning and I'm able to get some really nice uh, soft shadows the further away from the shadow caster I get and the larger the radius of the light source is. I'm just going to select my light source again. And I'm going to change the radius so that you can watch and see what happens to the shadows as I do that. So here I'm making it smaller and you can see that the shadows get sharper and sharper the smaller the radius of the light is. And as I increase the radius of the light the shadows get more and more blurry. So with a really large light source, I can get some amazing looking soft shadows, just like I can get in real life with large light sources. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of settings available for controlling uh, the behavior of ray, ray traced shadows in Unreal. First of all, we already took a look at this one. You can turn off and on ray tracing. And it's really nice that you can control this per light source. And actually, I'd recommend that you leave this off for all of the light sources where you're not experiencing this Peter Panning effect and where you don't need soft shadows. Those are basically the two features that ray tracing provides uh, for shadows. And if you don't need either of those, it's much better, much faster to render your scene with ray tracing off. But if you do want to get nice soft shadow fall off, uh, you can turn ray tracing on here. This setting here, Affect Ray Tracing Reflections, uh, controls whether or not you want the shadows to be ray traced into reflections. This is also a setting that I'd recommend turning off unless you really need it. Uh, because it makes the ray trace reflections more expensive. And then here, just the same uh, effect ray trace global illumination. This is whether or not you want your shadows in your global illumination. And again, uh, if you don't absolutely need it, I'd recommend turning it off. Now there is one more setting. There's not a whole lot of control of ray trace shadows, uh, but there is one more setting here. And this is the setting that controls samples per pixel. So I'm going to zoom in here and show you one problem that there is with the ray trace shadows. And that is uh, the default is samples per pixel set to one. And if I come in here really close to the shadows, you can see that there is a bit of artifacting. And that's because it's trying to do soft shadows with only one ray per pixel. And so just like last week when we talked about uh, the, the roughness effect of reflections where there's a cone, this is the same kind of deal. So for every pixel here, we're needing to send out multiple rays to calculate how soft these shadows are. But we can't do that because samples per pixel is set to one. And so for every pixel, it's sending out one ray per frame, but each subsequent frame, the rays are uh, the rays are going in, in random different directions and then they're being accumulated temporally or over time. And uh, there's an algorithm that's being used in the hardware for getting rid of the noise and kind of smoothing it out. But it has a really hard time uh, when there's only one ray per pixel and so we get this kind of noisy uh, animated effect. 
Now we can get rid of that if I tell it to, if I allow it to use more than one ray per pixel. So let's go ahead and change this to eight. And you can see it gets a lot smoother or if I jump up to 32. So the higher the uh, samples per pixel or rays per pixel setting that I give it, the smoother the shadows will become. Now this is kind of a dangerous setting to play with because uh, you can see that my rays per pixel or samples per pixel is set to 32, but my frame rate has dropped to 21, which is uh, completely unacceptable. So I'd recommend that you leave the samples per pixel at one, unless you're planning on zooming way into the shadows like we are here, because this looks pretty good if we're out here at a reasonable distance. It's, it's acceptable to have that amount of noise. We can't really see it from out here at this distance, whereas uh, when we're zoomed in much closer, uh, it becomes more obvious. So unless you have to get in really close to your shadows like this, uh, I think that samples per pixel set to one is sufficient. All right, so today we talked about uh, fixing the Peter Pan effect uh, caused by shadow bias with ray trace shadows. And we also talked about our ability to control the light source's radius and have a, a larger light source uh, cast really nice, uh, smooth fall off shadows with shadow ray tracing. Now again, I recommend that you only turn ray tracing on for lights where you really need it because there is a, a fairly significant cost. It's possible that with uh, new hardware coming out, we'll be able to turn more ray tracing options on. Um, but for now, with this hybrid approach of ray tracing, you wanna turn ray tracing off for as many things as you can and just use it where you need it. Uh, it can add some cool effects, but those effects come at a cost. I hope you enjoyed today's video and that you learned a lot about ray tracing shadows in Unreal. Uh, if you did, give the video a like and be sure to subscribe to the channel. Next week, we're gonna talk about global illumination uh, and ray tracing in Unreal, so be sure to come back for that. And we'll see you next week, everybody.